In this playlist, I'm gonna be sharing with you some hands-on workshops that I recorded in Colorado last year. We're gonna be learning about building with straw bale, cob, hempcrete, and even papercrete. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, then be sure to subscribe to the Off Grid Guru channel because that's what we do here. Plus, I'm gonna be making a huge announcement in just a moment and you're not gonna to wanna to miss that, so be sure to stick around. Alrighty, so before we get started, for those of you who don't know about Crestone, Colorado, it's a small town with a wealth of unique off-grid homes in their community that I've been documenting here on the channel. So for a series of awesome home tours, check out my playlist called Crestone, Colorado. The workshops in this video were filmed at the Crestone Energy Fair, which is their annual free entry event, providing an opportunity for outsiders to get an inside peek into their unique community. The fair has become a gathering place for alternative builders for over 30 years, offering home tours, hands-on demonstrations, and my personal favorite, the Builders Panel, a live question and answer forum featuring a panel of experts from all over the country. Last year, the builders combined their efforts and over the course of the weekend, created a Frankenstein structure made of seven different materials. The experiment was built on a foundation of rammed earth tires and the walls, a collage of straw bale, earth bag, hempcrete, papercrete, cob, and glass bottle bricks. Whew. That was a lot to say. This experiment is gonna show us how the materials work together and whether they can stand the test of time while exposed to the elements. Most of you already know that this is the kind of crazy off-grid alternative building stuff that I'm obsessed with. So it won't come as a surprise to anyone that this year I've decided to take it to the next level. That's why this year at the 33rd annual Crestone Energy Fair, I'm gonna host the builders panel. Yep, you heard that right. It's gonna be the off-grid gurus builders panel this year. And I'm gonna be bringing experts of my own to join the discussion. From earthships to aircrete and more, we're gonna answer your questions. Plus, I'm gonna be returning to the site of last year's experiment to shoot a video and see how it held up. So for more about the event, check out the link in the description. And without further ado, let's learn some stuff. All right, I'm here at the Crestone Energy Fair and behind me, is the first of Sunday's natural building demonstrations. It is hempcrete. I haven't worked with hempcrete before, so this is really interesting. These guys are coming out of Boulder, Colorado, and they have a source for the hemp herd actually in Colorado, local in the US. So it feels like a great step forward for the natural building community to not have to outsource getting the hemp fibers from Canada, at least here in the US. With the cost of building materials going up, I could see this becoming a great alternative. I'm gonna get up close and get some of these details, get you all the information. So Hemp Creek coming your way. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for coming out, guys. Uh, we are Rocky Mountain Hempfield. We're out of Boulder, Colorado. Uh, we've been doing this for about a year and a half, and uh, we're going to do a little demo on a section of wall over here. I'll talk about the material real quick. This is uh, the herd, so it's the woody core of uh, the hemp stalk. Uh, we don't want much fiber. Actually, none is best because it holds a lot of moisture and it takes forever to dry. Uh, this stuff has been coming from France, Canada, but um, we are very excited to say that this actually comes from center Colorado. So it's right down the road and um, it's some of the best in the world. There's a guy from France came over looking all over the country for the nicest herd and he found it and this is it. What we do is we mix this with type S lime. Type S lime is hydrated lime. so it, um, It'll dry uh, by air, but we need a hydraulic set since we're using water to kind of mix it up. So we're gonna add just a little bit of Portland cement to help with that uh, for the pozzolan. So we need some kind of hydraulic set to uh, seal it up. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, we're gonna weigh out some of these herds. We'll mix it over in the bucket. If you guys wanna help, like turning it, and then we'll have people actually on the walls with the uh, tamping tools and we'll just show you the method. And it's, it's pretty uh, easy, self-explanatory. These are some of the tools. So these, these are the tamping tools. This is kind of traditional. Uh, style of the tamping tool. With this angle, it, it's really good for getting under screws and around corners and stuff like that. Because you want to make sure, even though you got uh, screws in there, that it's, it's good pressure underneath. Um, but this is the style, but I, I made these out of wood banisters, if you can kind of tell. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple. You know, just a little glue and a screw. So there's also different heights. So it depends on 
where you're building, what height uh, of the wall you're at. Sometimes you need one really long down if you have two foot forms. We're only doing about 18 inch forms. So you don't have to reach so far in, but we have all different lengths and sizes. And sometimes it's like a new tool for every job. We'll just cut something on site that fits that little nook and cranny. Um, cool, so I'm gonna weigh out some herd here. So it's a 1 to 1.5 to 2 ratio, one, one part herd to 1.5 binder to 2 water. And so actually we do this by pounds, which actually works out really well for us by weight, yeah. Yeah. So just a little bit out of there. This. Yep, and then we're gonna go to host 21 with Portland. Okay, yeah, so we've been doing a four to one. So it's four parts um, uh, type S lime to one part uh, Portland. And you can play around with this mix. You can use less or more or different posilins. You can use brick ash, fly ash, metacalin. All right, so we'll get to mix in here. Um, I can take this off because it's not too bad. Uh, so we're working with lime, it kind of burns the skin. What we like about the lime is, is the pH of 8.3. Um, so I don't know if you guys heard us yesterday, but it's, it's very itchy. It's itchy on the skin, so insects hate it, rodents hate it. Uh, because it's a pH of 8.3, mold will not grow on it. Um, <clears throat> so it's a, just a beautiful combination. Um, it can rot if it just sits in water, like forever, but um, it'll take water on and then release it. Uh, so it's pretty magical. So we're going to pour this in lightly. Yeah, and then we'll get some water. So there's uh, different uh, modalities of doing this. Sometimes people do mix the herds in. It's usually a paddle mixer, like a mortar mixer. Herds with uh, the binder, but I actually kind of like doing it this way. It's a lot less messy um, And there's not all this in the air so much uh, Here we go. Cool, so we're just gonna mix this around for a little bit. I know it's nice And I'm just gonna get in here in a second. I just want to get it down Yeah, normally we'd use a nine cubic foot mixer. Yeah, it's a it does a batch at a time so I'm gonna get in here, there, you know, a little bit of, uh, there's chunks, you don't want the chunks building up, so I'm just gonna break those apart. Um, it's, yeah, one to 1.5 to two. Um, and depending on some of the mixes, it can be even more. Uh, yeah, so we, we also sometimes gauge because sometimes different herds right. soak differently, different binders will hold a little bit more moisture. So now, yeah, you want to mix that up with me? I'm gonna mix it over, over. Oh, look at that glove, backwards. So you want just enough moisture to kind of coat it with the, the binder. So you want enough lime coating it, but you don't want to use too much water. It actually uh, wipes away the silica that is in um the plant so the plant you know is sticky with a little bit of water you coat it with some lime and then stick it together that's helpful when you can kind of punch it all right we want to add a little uh more yeah so this is way too wet right now but this is why we got this here we go uh like an apple crumble so it's it's a quite dry people think it should be like really wet and that's a lot of the drawbacks uh because it takes too long to um dry and then it kind of falls apart or freeze thaw, yeah. Yeah, it kind of smells like oatmeal cookies a little bit too. This is kind of like oatmeal, just don't eat it. Oh, please don't. Not today, we'll go get a cookie after this, I promise. Let's not eat this. Okay. 
So yeah, I'll take it. I'll make a bowl. I want it to stick together. I find with Portland though, as it dries out a little bit more, it actually gets stickier. So right off the bat with other types of binders, it should be pretty solid. You should be able to catch it and then have it kind of crumble apart a little bit. So yeah, that's almost perfect. Perfect enough for this moment. Cool. All right, well, you want to grab some tampers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this stuff in buckets and then we're going to uh, pour it in here so you guys can kind of watch the process here. Uh, we'll build this wall up when it gets to here. Then we'll move the forms up to match this one and fill the rest of it. We dump it in. We do about usually uh, anywhere from four to five inches. We'll do about an inch and a half a wall at a time. Yeah, we'll just turn it. Good. Yeah, yeah, totally. So what we do is we kind of spread it out and you want to get the edges, especially in the corners. Yeah, and so you hear also hear a sound like when you know you're you know you're doing it well when you're on the wall, you hear that? So I just do that and just go down the edge and then we do a light like hand pack in the middle because you want a little bit more porous nature in the middle for insulation. Yeah, the R value, um, it is a great uh, number to understand resistance, but it's more about how is the house performing? What is the stable temperature over a 24 hour period? Um, so it grows exponentially. It starts at like 2.1, depending on your packing, on your binders, yeah. on the herds. Yeah. Um, but it usually around 2.1 to 2.4 to start, but they found like a 12 inch wall is performing around an R3 per inch. So you're getting like anywhere from 30 to 40 yeah. out of a 12 inch wall. Um, but it outperforms an R value because it's also using moisture to uh, control temperature and thermal mass. Yeah, it absorbs about 90% sound. Um, it su succeeds the, uh, exceeds the decibel rating of uh, a little over three decibels for an average home. So it's just amazing uh, soundproofing material. So if you're a musician or have a home theater, it's fantastic for that. Watch your back. Coming in. Yeah, and then make sure like, so you see this, you get under that nail because what happens is there'll be a big gap underneath the nail sometimes if you don't pay attention to the little corners. Press a little extra tight in the corners because you want the corners to be nice and clean and hold together well. Okay, yeah, so um, overnight, or off a lunch break, uh, this top layer will dry out a little bit. So what we wanna do is we kind of pick at it and kind of bring it up like this and then wet, wet it down. So, you know, we had a good 20 minutes between these batches. So just do a little layer of moisture to help it uh, meld with the, the new batch. Yeah, I mean, it, the more you can kind of like keep it moist while it's drying, it, it helps cures it, yeah. And so with this real quick, you want to just do the edges and a lot of little taps is fantastic more than like really hard. So I'll also just do a finger test and go around the edge and it feels like it's packed on the edge. We want to leave the middle loose uh, for insulation, but the edges you want to get, I, I like it good and tight, holds the wall better. Anything? Yeah. Yeah. I like the massager or you can even massage these forms, like hit it with a reciprocating saw which helps out a lot too. Yeah, so I'm gonna lift these forms up in a second, which will marry to these two, and then we'll have that next wall coming up, but we wanna go a little higher. Fill that up. Yeah, a little more. Have you guys noticed there's a lot of cactus around here? Pretty darn quick, yeah. Uh, basically instant. Right, and also uh, what we would normally do on a build, we would leave this bottom two feet. These are usually two feet high, so we rip a four by eight and a half. Uh, we like the tongue and groove for the first two, so we'll have, you know, the groove at the top, or sorry, the tongue at the top, and then rip them, and then put the second piece into the groove, so from the first layer to the second layer, seamless with that. And then we'll just leave this bottom form because it's a construction site and it can get kicked or messed around with. So we normally, we just leave this bottom one and continue to build up to protect it. Yeah, I think I got that one. 
This is the fun part. All right, Roland, you want to jump on the other side and grab that corner? I want to make sure this one comes straight out because it's actually right through the wall. If you get a little careless and kind of move this quickly, it could just kind of rip a hole because this is all soft. But here we go. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can even see the two lines between the two batches. Yeah. Yeah. Has there ever mix color and pigment in oh yeah. It? Oh yeah. Exposed? Totally. I, I mix a bunch of pigments. I have this actual. I'm gonna turn it into a bar. Yeah. We have a, a wall kind of like this, and we have different rolls of pigment. So I was just trying out five different kinds. Turns out beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And take a look. Like this piece off there. I'm just gonna take that, and you can just fix these little pieces here and there. Um, yeah, we wouldn't ha normally have this. I've never hooked two straw bell, but yeah. we're going to work it out. Yeah. yeah, so this is good. And now I'll just take this and slide it on up. So I'll do this one side. Rolling. So I, I, we just took these off. And what we'll do is we're just going to slide it up to about an inch below that. And just put this right here. And if you want to hold that there, that's fantastic. One more right there. Yeah, that's good. That's about right. We'll find out. And then I look for it to kind of suction in. And it looks pretty, pretty straight. What we'll do too on a very specific project is we'll cut uh, PVC spacers to match this, the bottom to the top. And so we'll go until they're kind of snug. It's like, okay, that's perfect. So then you have a nice uniform wall. <laughs> All right, looks good. Yeah. Right. right, yeah, put, put your handprint in. So a little lower. Is the inside of this treated at all? Did you put anything on it? No. No, you don't, you don't need to. Um, and you can, they have uh, semi-permanent forms too. They have metal ones. I'm actually working on something uh, that's pretty spectacular, but I'd have to kill you at this moment to tell you about it. So I'm not going to. Um, but it's a form like... All right, so from here, they're just gonna be repeating the process. And I've edited the video quite a bit, but Eamon actually said a lot during the interview that I wanted to just visit again right now, including the cost of this material and also hempcrete bricks. Okay, so uh, all said and done, la um, materials and labor for us, it's around $25 per foot cubed. And that's like a 12 inch thick wall. So if we do a 10 inch wall, we'll take off, you know, 20%. 15, 20%. You know, it, it, it's up and down, but it's slowly going down because it'll get more competitive, especially once after next season, we're going to see a huge influx because this season people are like, eh, you know, it's anywhere from uh, 35 cents to 85 cents right now per pound. Well, it's going to go down after next growing season because people are like, oh, we, you know, it's a little late this year, but they're realizing how much building is happening. We're all going to run out. I mean, we, we might have to do upwards of 50 homes next year that we might not have heard for because it's all from last year. Uh, no, actually we get all ours tested for mold, um, silica values. Um, so this is as high quality of herds, clean. Right, yeah. Common lime, yeah, $13 a bag. That's why we love using it, it's cheap. So you can buy a proprietary binder for about uh, 35 to $40 a bag. Or you can get this for 12 or 13 bucks and then add a little Portland cement for another three dollars and you have a $16 bag of binder rather than a 35 or 40 dollar bag of binder plus you can get these two materials almost anywhere in the country and so in terms of traveling we don't have to get stuff shipped from overseas or you know across the country we can go to the local town wherever we're building and pick all this stuff up at their mineral store Sand and gravel, and yeah, talk about sustainability in terms of localizing. So bricks, uh, the advantage of bricks is that they're dry. There's no dry time. You don't have to sit and wait for it to cure uh, to finish plastering. So you can go up right away. Um, the thermal bridges with the plaster in between the brook, uh, bricks, it's not going to perform as well. It's still going to perform great, but this is completely monolithic, right? So we're actually burying the frame. 
Uh, so there's no thermal bridges. Oh, cause, cause with brick, you lay it on top of each other. Yeah, on top of each other with a, a layer of mortar. Yeah, well, the tamping, so a, a perfect world would be like a, you know those uh, massage tools that are like brrrr, yeah. right? It's not like hard pressure, but multiple shots, like well, a reciprocating. Like a small version of this. Yeah, but like, yeah. Boop, 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 that would be perfect. That's what this 